everybody i hope you're having a lovely week so we're going to do the third video for this week now and we're going to carry on with our learning that we've been starting so can you remember the split digraphs we've learned so far hmm i remember one of them is a can you remember the other let's see if we can today let's have another look okay let's get going so find a space let's have a big stretch up and stretch out to the side wiggle your fingers Let's go this week today. And the other way. Shake your hands. Shake your hands up. And what should we do today? Oh, see if you can balance on one leg again, like this, holding the other one behind you. you put your arm out for balance if you need it. Can you bend the knee that you're on as well? That's really hard. So while you're holding on to one leg, try and bend the other. Just be careful of the things around you. Let's swap over, so I'm going to stand on my other leg and hold this one. Arm out or on your hip. And then can you bend your other knee? It's a really tricky balance one, this. You could even try that one as well, on both sides. Like that. Bit of that yoga pose again. So for today, what we're going to do is, I'm going to play musical statues with you. So I'm going to press pause on the music. And when I press pause, you have to stand still, okay? So I've got my music here. Are you ready? So have a little dance. And freeze. Well done if you did that straight away. Let's try it again. Freestyle, dancing. You can try the floss if you want. Or you can do star jumps or hops. Freeze. Well done if you manage to stand still then. Maybe someone at home can help you to tell if you are standing still properly. Well done if you manage to stand still. Okay, we'll just do one last thing. Let's have some star jumps just to make sure we're really warm and ready to learn. And touch your toes, and it's time to go. Well done. We've got our secret word, which is using our E sound from yesterday. Do you remember the split digraph E? So that means an E, then another letter, then another E. There's only one letter that can fit in there, so we can't have two. Just one letter, and it can be any letter that splits up those two E's, and it makes the E sound. Let's see if you can read the words for today. These two are interesting because they're the same word. We've got E-V-E, -E, which spells Eve. And this time we've got E-V-E, -E, which spells Eve as well. Why do you think I've given one a capital letter? I've given this one a capital letter because this is for the name Eve. Sometimes people are called Eve. And this one is for the word Eve. So do you know like when it's Christmas Eve, it means the night before. Or say it's going to be your birthday tomorrow. Today would be your birthday Eve. That's what I like to call it anyway. So we've got Eve as the day and Eve as the name with a capital letter. This one also has a capital letter because it's a name. We've got Sut, Eve, Steve. So we've got three uh, words there. Two of them are names, so they have capital letters. Well done if you spotted those. Our word for, sorry, our sound for today, I always call it a word for some reason, is a split I. So we've got A, E, Aye, we're going for these long vowel sounds drawn out. So they're not I, like we, we used to know it, I. When we add this E, it turns into a split I sound. So let's see some uh, ways to remember that. So I, I'll just put it on here. We remember that like this. It's quite a sweet one, this. N, I, S, S, M, I, oh, oops, that should be a circle. Nice smile. So underneath here, you can practice. Maybe you can draw a smile um, by looking in the mirror at yours. Try and draw a nice smile. Or give someone a nice smile in your house. Yee. 
you can do a teeth smile with your teeth or you can just do a, a mouth closed smile. Make sure it's a nice one though. So that's how we remember this I sound. I, I, nice smile. I'm going to write some words under here for you to try and sound out now. There's one. Well, I write the next one. You can practice that. Can you read any of those? We've got s l i d slide. If you go to the park, you might have been on a slide like this. One of those things. M i k Mike. Hmm, that's not right, is it? It's not got a capital, so it can't be the name Mike. When we have a curly k in between a split i, it turns into a s. So let's try it like that. M Ice, mice. Same with the word nice. Can you see that turn into a s sound? N, ice. And even in just the word ice itself, you know, like an ice cube, we've got I, s. When a C or a curly k is the letter there, it turns into a s sound. That's another thing to remember. Next word we've got is sh, I, n, shine. Here we've got k, I, t, kite. That's one of those things that you can fly in the sky. It's a type of shape as well. Um, sometimes they have little ribbons on them like that. And then last one, we've got s eyes, size. So that means how big something is or how small something is. Size. See if you can come up with um, a sentence with any one of those in. Maybe more than one. Make sure you've got your capital letters, your full stops, your finger spaces, and make sure it makes sense. So I could say, um, did you know that mice love slides? Oh, wow. And you can have the word love in there. I forgot about that. Do you remember our word that we learnt on Monday? Our tricky word, L-O-V-E, spells love. I just thought as well, I completely forgot to show you our tricky word of today. Do you know what this one is? Ow. House and it's kind of got one bit that's particularly difficult to, to read, and that's the end bit because that s e is just making a s sound, so it's her ow. We know that one, how s. Do you remember that when we're spelling house? I'll put that on here to help us remember. Or you could say, Mice love my house. And then you've got two tricky words and a word of the day that would be really cool. So see if you can write your own word uh, or own sentence underneath. Okay, I've just used my paper aeroplane here to try and save paper. So I've folded it out and I'm just going to show you what I mean by today's challenge for maths because we're going to be looking at this symbol. Share, share, share is what we used to call it. But it's, it's actually the posh name is divide or division. So we're dividing today by sharing. So what we can try and do is this one. It says six shared between three. You can read that symbol as being shared between. So six shared between three equals something. This second number tells us how many hoops to draw because how many people were sharing between hoops or plates, whatever you like to call them. So we've got three there, so I'm going to draw three hoops. The first number shows us what we're sharing. So we're going to share six equally between the three hoops. Watch how I do it. I count out as I'm, as I'm drawing. So one two, three, four, five, six. And we stop when we get to six. So that's a common thing that people can wobble with is they'll carry on counting and then they'll go, oh no, I was only supposed to do six. So just watch yourself when you're doing that one. So as you can see, the, sh the numbers shared equally. So it does work. And our number, our answer is two because there are two in each group, okay? So let me show you today's challenge. If you have a look on this one, it says, can I solve division problems? And it says, you have 20 sweets. Share them equally between two children first. It says 20 shared between two. This is your number sentence if you want to use my help. 20 shared between two children equals something because we're sharing 20. 
and then, then it wants you to share it between five, so 20 shared between five. And lastly, the third part of this challenge is 20 shared between 10 children. So these numbers will tell you how many hoops to draw each time. And we're always just sharing 20 for this question, okay? The next four are, are four different divide challenges using the same hoop trick. Then after that, we go on to finding half. So half just means when you've got something, say you've got this, and I'll halve it, so I'll put it into two pieces. That's where I keep my play done. So I've got that, and I go, cut, cut it equally in half. So that means equally into two pieces or two groups. So you need to half 10. So you could make 10 out of Play-Doh and then share it into two equal groups. Same with 14. And finally, this is a cheeky challenge. This is kind of your mega challenge for today. Can you find half of 13? you might not be able to do this. And I want you to tell me what happens when you try. So try and figure that out. It's a bit of an investigation. That's your challenge for today. I hope you enjoy it. I'm gonna go through this very shortly. So if you want to try it now, press pause and then uh, I'll go through the answers. Okay, so the first question, 20 shared between two, they each get 10. Because if you get two hoops using that, and you share 20, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. There are 10, and did two in one place. There are 10 little circles in each hoop, so that makes uh, 10. This one, 20 shared between five, you should have drawn five hoops and shared 20 equally, and you'll get four in each. I, the reason I know that is because I know my fives times tables and I know that my four as well, which you'll start to learn as you get older. But if you count them up, you should end up with four in each hoop. Next one, shared between 10. So you needed to draw 10 hoops for that one. And the answer was two. Well done if you got those. The next one, 12 divided by three was four. Six shared between one was six. That was a bit of a trick question, only drawing one hoop. Next one, 20 shared between four is five. 16 shared between two is eight. Remember shared between two means half. That one's divide by two means put into two groups or share between two. It's the same as half. So if find half of 10, the answer's five. Find half of 14, the answer's seven. Did you try this one? Finding half of 13, I'll show you what happens. Remember half is the same as divided by two. So you need to draw two hoops or an easier way is you get a shape and just split that into two. That can help too. So I'll share 13 between two. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. 10, 11, 12, 13. Hmm. Are they equal? This side we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. This side we've only got one, two, three, four, five, six. So we can't do it. The answer is no, because it's not equal. And I think it's something to do with that number there. All of the other numbers that we've shared between two or halved have been even. But what's that number there? It's odd. You can't, well, you can't find a whole number that's half of an odd number. So if you try and divide it by two, you get one left over. So that one there is cheeky. We'll have to put it on the outside because it doesn't fit. Well done if you've tried those ones, guys. Remember in English yesterday how we wrote some sentences about uh, your friend's garden? So mine was about Lima's garden, wasn't it? And all the wonderful vegetables and things they've got in there. So today we're going to plan a story. You're going to make your very own Oliver's Vegetables book about you going to somebody else's house. So mine would be... be uh, mine would be called Miss Martin's Vegetables and I'd be going to Lima's Garden. So in our plan, we need to do this before we write our story. We need to think of the three things that really happen in the story. So we've always got to have a beginning. We've got to have a middle. And we've got to have an end. Those are the three ingredients that make a really good story. So usually the beginning is telling us who's in the story uh, and what, what they're thinking of doing. 
the middle is is where the most important part happens so something exciting or interesting sometimes something can go wrong and then the end is when it all finishes and something happens at the end um this one we can make it quite a funny ending so i'll show you what kinds of things to put in each part uh, you can do this in two ways if you're feeling a bit more arty today you can draw the pictures and uh, maybe write some key words that you're going to use the more detail and ideas you put into your plan, the easier writing your story will be. So if you're feeling brave today and want to write sentences, that could really help you when you come to write your story. So the beginning is about your character. So mine's going to be Miss Martin. So I'll draw me. Dee, dee, dee. And uh, all I eat is chips. So I'm going to put all Miss Martins eat in the story is chips wow that's one bit of the plan and then i go to lima's garden don't i i go to lima's house for the week maybe it's in madagascar who knows that's where he's from isn't it so uh she goes to lima's house you can add more detail here maybe the adjectives you've used uh, so maybe instead of chips i can say greasy chips greasy oily chips she goes to Lima's house or Lima's garden. She has to try new things. So that's the start of my story. So I've got I, all I eat is chips. So maybe I'll draw some chips on here. I'm not eating anything else. I only eat chips. That's what I'm thinking at the beginning. Um, so I'm going to draw a love heart and chips because i love chips then i go to lima's house then i have to try new things the middle part of the story is me trying all the different um uh, vegetables that he's got there so i'm gonna have tomatoes on one day um so i'll put tomatoes maybe write those adjectives that we like so you can talk about oh you could even ah that's a better idea i'm going to describe the garden in the middle as well use our beautiful writing there May as well put that to good use. So describe the garden in the middle part. Write about the tomatoes. Maybe she makes some soup. Uh, maybe she has some lettuce. And makes a salad. Uh, maybe she has some leek. And has leek and... Mm, what should we have? Leek stew we can put. Sometimes put leeks in stew and uh, maybe she can have some onion, onion pie. <laughs> Think of all the different things your character might eat and you can do one for each day uh, and that can be the middle. Then at the end, the person who, so somebody comes to pick up your character so maybe your mum comes along or somebody comes to pick you up i'm going to say uh that uh that my mum picks me up so my mum comes so mum comes pick her up and obviously on the last day in the book oliver gets to eat his chips doesn't he because he has found the potatoes so when mum comes to pick her up um i'm going to be eating chips because i've managed to make them using the potatoes after all that so maybe i've got a really full mouth full of chips but all mum sees is that i've been eating chips so she might say hey you're supposed to eat something else so mum comes to pick her up mum says she wishes I didn't eat chips all the time. Or oh, I didn't only eat chips. Mum comes to pick her up and Mum says she, she wishes I didn't only eat chips. But then we know the truth that actually I've been trying all these different things all week. It's just at the end that I have a little sneaky chip time because we made the potatoes. So then we can say everybody laughs. That could be the ending. 
So your challenge is um, to think of whether you want to do this in drawing or writing. Uh, think of the different vegetables you want to have for each day in the story. You could just use the same as Oliver's vegetables or you could just change what they're making out of it. The biggest change really is going to be that you're the character in the story and you're going to your friend's garden. OK. So once you've figured out that, you can plan the beginning, the middle and the end of your story. It can be as as neat and tidy as you want, or I've done mine quite quickly because I wanted to get my ideas down and that's all right. Just try your best to include some really good writing, um, some, some adjectives, sorry. So instead of tomatoes, you could add adjectives like ripe, juicy tomatoes, or red or ruby. Remember, we like to use those jewel words. Uh, you could have crispy lettuce, crunchy lettuce, zingy onion. Think of all the different adjectives you could use. The more we do in here, the easier our story will be. Okay, once you've done that, that's your task for the day. And then the next thing we're going to do is start writing. So how's everybody's aeroplane challenge coming along? Have you managed to make one? I hope they're doing really well. Uh, what we're going to do as well this week is another challenge. And I think, to be honest, it's quite a lot to fit in one week. So if you want to do it uh, maybe this week or next, that's fine, um, and put it on the blog, is, uh, the challenge is, can you recreate a book cover using the things you have at home? So Miss Hegarty and I, when we were in school um, this week, we decided to recreate We're Going on a Bear Hunt. So we got one of the lovely helpers from our class who was in, in as well to help us make that front cover. So all we did, we just sort of stood in the same pose. We got a twig at the front. Uh, we found a huge bear in school as well. So we used that teddy to help. Um, I don't want you to go all out and spend money or anything on this. It's, it doesn't have to be really high quality just do your best see what you've got at home and see what uh book covers you can make i'll put a picture of ours on here but we did send it out as well if you want to see it i'll put it on here and i'd love to see yours don't forget to share it on the blog because i love seeing your learning it's a really nice way for, to, for us to keep in touch and for the children to comment on each other's posts thank you so much and take care everybody see you tomorrow